Thanks for tuning in to a brand new episode of 420 Grams on NewsClick.in where we talk about everything Indian football. And if we're talking Indian football, well, of course, the most current thing that everyone is talking about is the recently uh, concluded World Cup draw for the 20. 22. 22 World Cup and the Asian Cup 2023. Uh, I've got with me in studio Siddhant Ani, partner in crime. And of course, joining us from Manipur on a solid Wi-Fi signal. Wi-Fi. Is the legend of Indian football himself, former India captain, Renadi Singh. Guys, uh, before I get your comments, I'm just going to tell you what India's group is in this World Cup and uh, Asian Cup qualifying. We've been grouped with Qatar, Oman, Bangladesh and Afghanistan and India being the fifth team in that group. So before anything, Renati, <coughs> just purely on the group, would you say India would consider themselves lucky to be drawn in such a group? In a World Cup qualifying, I think you will not get any easy team. Of course, yes, Bangladesh is the one I think which is beatable, but Afghanistan is also going to be equally, equally tough. So you, you are not going to get any... Uh, any uh, uh, easy group at all. So whatever group we get, I think we just have to keep on going and fight for it. No, but if you take a look at the other groups, Randy Bhai, I mean, of course, so you've got Oman, you've got Qatar, which are the Asian champions, but you can think of getting maximum points versus Afghanistan versus Bangladesh, which in turn would sort of tell you that you have a good chance of making the Asian Cup. It's not the World Cup we're focusing on, but the Asian Cup. Uh, yes, but then we have to see that, you know, we Oman, of course, yes, we, we can fight, but Qatar is a team where Asian champions and we, I mean, we all know that how they beat Japan. So it's going to be one really tough opponent. But Afghanistan, they may be on 149 in the ranking, but ranking doesn't work. But Afghanistan is a good side. And if you see the, the last matches we have played against Afghanistan, uh, it was not easy at all. So again, at home, yes. At home, Oman, Afghanistan and uh, Bangladesh. At home, we should, we should be able to get a, a result, a point. But going Afghanistan away is going to be one hell of a match. So it's going to be a tough one. But say, having said that, we should just start concentrating on a single match. First match again, Oman is going to be the most important one. And if we can get a positive result at home, that, that moral boost will help all the players to, to come out. And I'm sure the last matches we have played against uh, Syria. And they did well, you know, if we could have avoided a penalty, you know. But they have, they have done well in players. I can see that, not, not the first two matches, but the... Players, the confidence they get from those matches are huge. Bye. Thoughts on the group? Thoughts on the group? Am I, am I, am I wrong <coughs> in saying that we should consider ourselves lucky? Because you take a yeah, look at so the other groups, man. So there's no Japan, there's no Korea. Yeah. But you have to get one of those big boys. So you have Qatar. I mean, the way the pot, you got Asian champions, bhai. The way the pots are drawn up, it's based a little bit on the rankings. So because India are now 101st and in the top, let's say, 16, 18 teams in Asia, they're in the third pot. Hmm. So it was expected that we'd get two from lower down and two from higher up. Now, which which the higher up teams are, that essentially is your luck factor. Hmm. Uh, I think in Oman, it's it's a slightly luckier in that sense. But like Randy saying, I don't think there are any easy games for India at this level. Uh, even going away to Bangladesh is not going to be an easy game. Yes, yes. Um, uh, depending on. So also, I, I don't but know off the top of my head what the list of fixtures is, as in when the matches are. The first games are, I think, September 5th and 10th. Yes. Uh, yes. But after that, what happens? I mean, it's also a long, spread out qualifying schedule that will happen. Start in September 2019, go on till June, July to 2020, uh, 2020. So, over the course of this one year, essentially the new coach, and like we're saying, now he's established his top 11. Hmm for, uh, I think, going forward, at least for this qualifying campaign. So, he'll really have to concentrate on now the tactical elements and the fine points of how he wants his team to play. Because this is very different from what you've had leading up to this. Yeah, fair very enough. Very results-oriented. We have to get points out of it. We have to get points out of as many games as we can, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. So, of course, uh, as Siddhant was talking about it, uh, from uh, September 2019 to June, July 2020 is the entire qualification process for the World Cup and the Asian Cup. I'm just going to take you through how this plays out. Now, eight group winners 
Uh, that means the total of eight groups have been made. Eight group winners and four best runners up advance to the 2023 Asian Cup directly. Right. And then, of course, move on to the final round of the World Cup qualifiers. And then the next best 24 teams to compete for the remaining 12 slots in the 2023 Asian, Asian Cup. September 2019 to June 2020. So, Renity, uh, I'd be right in saying then that next best 24 teams, right? That is our aim. I mean, if we make it to round three of World Cup qualifiers, then nothing like it. Because, and I, I, honestly speaking on this group, I honestly feel there's a chance of doing it. Because of the way you've played against Oman in the past. I know Qatar, I'm not even saying anything about it. But because of the way you've played against Oman, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, you actually have a realistic chance of thinking to go into round three of World Cup qualifiers. I mean, that should be the aim. Though the ultimate aim should be to get into the 2023 Asian Cup. Yeah, it will be great if we can do that. But the, the guys, the way they have played in the last match uh, against Syria, if we can continue doing that, I think we should be able to. But then again, you know, this is uh, the, the one good thing about this uh, World Cup qualifying is in 10 months, eight matches, coach will have a lot of time to organize a match after match. You know, it's not like nowadays where you play in one month, you, you finish or in almost all the match. So th there will be a lot of time where the coach is going to organize. The only... Uh, a uh, scary thing is, I think we our defense is still looks shaky. You know that that's the main uh, main thing. You know if we if coach can uh, rectify that or if the players can improve, I think because to play against Oman away and to play against Qatar, it, it's not going to be easy. We have to be compact and we we have to play as a team. Are going front, we are doing well. We are playing attacking football, but. To play against the best team, we have to defend well as well. Yeah, I'll just take you guys through the fixture list now, how it plays out. September 5th is our first game versus Oman at home. Then September the 10th is versus Qatar away. And then 15th October, Bangladesh home. 14th November, Afghanistan away. 19th November versus Oman away. 26th March, Qatar at home. And then we end it with 4th June, Bangladesh away. The only thing I'd say in this fixture list is <coughs> that if, say, we had a Stephen Constantine, and we had a team which was settled hmm. under him, which was a settled lineup. You knew who your top 11, top 14 are, and your defense was also worked on. I would say it's a brilliant fixture for us because you play against Oman and Qatar away. Because you're a settled lineup, you can get more positives out of that game rather than negatives. Now, because you brought up that entire defense scenario, and our defense is all over the yep. place, Randy. I'll, I'll be as honest yep. as I can be. You play Oman and yep. Qatar away, and they make, you know, they take over you and they pump in the goals in your first two games. I feel that yep. confidence dip is a lot you know, factor. Hai, yeah. And that could play into your uh, games where you want those three points versus Bangladesh, versus Afghanistan, you know, and that could affect it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's why it is. Yeah, yeah go on. I was go just saying, on, it's maybe go, uh, going back for a second, just like in terms of, we, we talked about what ego, steam matches, short term goals with mm. the Indian national team are going to be. And what we were talking about was exactly this qualifying campaign and how the target has to be to, or the aim has to be to make it through to the next round of World Cup qualifiers. We have, I mean, let's be pretty clear. We have no chance of qualifying for the 2022 World Cup. That's But round three is a positive, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But making it, yeah, exactly. So, basically making the step up from like the top 16 teams in Asia hmm. to the top 12 teams in Asia. That's, those are the small sort of baby steps that we're looking at making. And direct qualification for the Asian Cup would be a fantastic, I think, outcome. Yeah. That said, if we go through to play the next round of qualifying matches, we the national team gets a couple of extra games. So that's not a negative either. Fair enough. <laughs> so, especially in terms of a country where players <coughs> are not getting enough match time, I, I think there's no harm in playing an extra couple of international <coughs> games, especially if there's like a sort of playoff scenario or some something on the line hmm. because there's that extra motivation also for the players fans are a little more excited and into it overall every, i think everything gets a bit of a fillip uh coming back to your point about the defense for i want to ask you randy do, do you have in your mind a, a back five goalkeeper and then four in front that you think are the best five who should be playing for india i think yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, of course, I'm going. I'm not going to name, but then if you see, coach have tried. You know, I, all the defenders in India, and we have to be. We have to agree with that. He have tried his best. So now he has to select from those players in, in those three matches we have played. He have to select the best. But 
of course, it, it's sad that Sandesh is injured. But the, the way we are playing now, then with the new coach, I think he likes to play from the back. And to play from the back, we need to have a technically sound defender to, to play all those long passes, short passes, you know, to be more. It's not like, you know, you just clear it and you go up. You, know, you have to play from the back. And, and in India, I think we still need good quality defenders if we have to play the same style against Oman or Qatar. But Renati Bhai, if so, you so just you, talk about defence, just purely defence, I'm not bothered about what they're doing with the ball. Mm-hmm. Defenders, where are you? If you just yes. talk about guys who will put their body on the line, tactically know where to be. Hmm. Yeah, so so this is where, so this whatever, you know, the defenders, like they are about, he have tried, coach have tried about seven, eight defenders already. And honestly, in India, if you look anywhere, you don't have any more defenders play, who can play at this level. Or you have to wait for three, four years to, to come new defenders to come up. So he has to make whatever we have, he has to bring out the best from those defenders. So it's not going to be easy at all. And, and it, it's sad for him though. But the way we are going the way forward, if we can do the same at the, at the defense area, we will be able to. So that's why we said that first match against Oman at home will be the most important one. If we don't get a good result, going away Qatar, and we know that it's going to be difficult. After that, we have Bangladesh and Afghanistan. We won't be uh, able to win that because the, the conference will be low. And so first one positive result against Oman will 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 clear out everything. Essentially set the tempo for yeah. how the, uh, the entire campaign might yeah. go. Yeah. And if we remember, yeah. actually we had a disastrous uh, sort of qualifying campaign last time. Uh, where even against oh, Guam, we Guam. can uh, sort of get a, get a result. So uh, really, of course, it's a completely new look team also. I think very few of those players, except Sunil, uh, Gurpreet, a couple of guys, everyone else is new. I, I think there's a chance for a guy like Anwar, for example, to come in. But he's ball, injured, yeah. Ball playing defender. Yeah, so I, I mean, but there's I also know. time. The good thing is, pre-season will happen. And then season will start, so the players will get some element of match fitness, sharpness, all of that will, will start happening. Hmm. By the time we're into September, I think uh, they'll be preparing for the Super Cup this time is happening as a pre-season tournament. I think that starts September 15th. So, I don't know how they're looking at scheduling, I mean, uh, these issues... I, I, I don't know, continue. I don't know, man. I don't know how much... How there, much. There, there, is, there is there is hardly any time. I think coaches have tried all the defenders, and he is going to select the best from from those from defenders. What he's I got. feel so essentially. So I guess. What got. I guess there, so. There is no. There is no time to see any other players. Yeah. I feel. yeah. So he's going to select the so best. So we're in agreement essentially on that, uh, except those players that are coming back from injury. Yeah. Essentially, everyone else in this squad, yeh squad rahega. Jo bhi apne chop change. Sir, player hi kya hai? Iske alawa, iske alawa, main to keh raha hu player hi nahi hai. To play international level. Honestly, there is no players yet. No. If you don't play clubs, where will the players come from? No, okay. I agree with that. But Renati, bhai, I'll, I'll ask you this. Now, keeping in mind that, you know, I know what yeah. Siddhant was talking about, that it's pre-season, it's Super Cup. Hai. But Super Cup, ISL, I-League. The difference is between the sky and the sky when you're playing Qatar away, when you're playing Oman at home. The difference is between the sky and the sky. So then if you put in a new boy there, you know, they might just completely feel out of place. So I'm asking you this. What we've seen from this coach, is that there's a lot going forward. You've discovered a Changte, you've, of course, Udanta and Changte are coming in from the wings. But what would you rather have? Sahal. Mo- more soli- yeah, Sahal. More solidity in defence or more in terms of trying going forward? No, I, I, I will still want to go forward. Keeping in the mind that defender, defender helping uh, the midfielders. We, we shouldn't change. I'm sure the coach is not going to change the style in, 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 a, in, a, in a big way. Of course, yes, we will be concentrating a lot more and defend when we play against Oman and, 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 and Qatar. But the playing style will, all, will be almost the same. And I, it should be, you know. And in, in, our, day, in our time, uh, when we started, it's all about defending, defending 90 minutes. But now, at least uh, these players are going up front well. So why to, to go up front well, the defenders, that's why we need a little more quality Yeah, but Renati Bhai, if you're, if you're going in front, you're also leaving space at the back. And if you're leaving space at the back, yeah. you need top quality defenders to cover that. 
yeah but because these are the these are the only uh, six seven defenders we have so like i said you know we have to take the best out from them and play as a, as a team so defenders are still i feel that they can play more as a team and more compact they, they should be able to help well the same style of game but defender playing more compact and helping uh, up front we had a, we were doing this live commentary the other day while the india syria game was going on all of you who watched much love to all of you more more than 10 people watched so <laughs> we we really excited two of them are from my family baki sab news click wale but anyway so rishi se yahi baat kar rahe he he also was a midfielder but predominantly played as a left back rishi kapoor rishi kapoor ex mohan bagan and yeah. and yeah, yeah. an india player yeah he was with me yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he was with me in mohan bagan so, yeah. very well um so two things we, we would asking him one is what do you make of of course none of us are on the pitch so we don't really know what exact conversations they are having but what do you make of the communication jo baat cheet ho rahi hai defense mein mujhe lag raha hai bahar se dekhne mein ki baat nahi kar rahe hain ek dusre se ball ko dekh rahe hain zyada there's a lot of and if you're yeah. pressing high and you're ball watching that's when like there's you know if yeah, somebody is thinking ball. the ball over the top they they have no idea everyone is sort of wondering who's going to cover the ball who's going to close the line who's going to mark the player the the that cohesiveness is not there that's one and uh, the second question was i've forgotten no worries but answer first is. question was long <laughs> enough yeah see now if you uh, that those three matches coach have tried you know when you try different defenders you know to to get that combination it takes time so from now on i don't think he's going to do any experiment with the defenders so whoever best for his select until they get injured they are going to be there for long time and that's the key okay randy bhai just one last thing i know we've spoken a lot about defense not touching it any more now uh, this is on the best player in the team and the captain of the team sunil chhetri now you've seen the way the coach and his system is he likes playing a five man midfield right he likes playing three in the middle right. and two out wide that being changte and udanta which means only space for sunil chhetri to play as up front as a striker if he plays up yes. front as a striker a are you getting the best out of him and is there any other system in which you can accommodate sunil chhetri in this team striker khilao hi mat that's my point i i think I, for me sunil chhetri right now there, there is no other player who can play up front right now first of all in india better than sunil chhetri even it, at this point of time playing as a launch of course he loves to play from the from the left coming cutting in but the way he the way the formation is sunil chhetri right up front in our there's also sunil chhetri played up front when 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 bob outen was there so i think the way he is playing right now in india we don't have any other striker who can play up front better than sunil chhetri but are you getting so the best out of him to, yeah getting the best out and that's the only thing but we who will play in place of him up front and where will you, you get don't the have anyone he's not playing you don't front. have anyone it's a tough choice course, robert uh, yeah yeah but but there's there's there has to be someone who can play in that position right he is getting goals he is running 90 minutes and he's fighting for every single ball so so he, i i feel that in this formation for me sunil chhetri is is uh, okay up front and i like him to play up front because the the workload and and the speed they have to take changte and udanta and at the back uh, sahal and thaba and uh, and amarjit they are doing quite well so those uh, those four midfielders and one striker they uh, and, and at the back one one more defender uh, amarjit one more uh, defensive midfielder and they are they are, i think we we shouldn't change much on that uh ah. maybe kurunivan asik kurunivan can can come in as a substitute yeah, yeah so just and to change what about yeah, yeah. things up and if if asik asik can also if asik gets fit asik can also play as a front yeah. Yeah, but yeah. i would rather be he has done well uh, on the on the left wing as we have seen that so so changte in place of changte if uh, sahal uh, if uh, uh, kurunivan can come in or uh, asik or or if if he, uh, udante is not playing well uh, changte on the left and uh, kurunivan on the right and in in the in the midfield sahal uh, amarjit and thapa they are doing quite but well. defensive corner kind of for renedi bhai us midfield mein pranay aayega na so, so now so now see when you play in this type in this type of game the, the style that coach are playing you know we we are so used to saying that oh we need one defensive midfield tough one no no in not in this formation so it keeps shifting you know if it's it's all about you know, now i know that you, know, you want to have one uh, man defender where he can hold the ball but in this formation it's more more uh, 
uh, fast he flowing fluid, and uh, yeah. a lot more fluid yeah amarjit can defend look at look at amarjit how he can how he was defending in the last match he was not playing as attacking strike attacking midfielder but he was playing from the back but how he was closing down uh, with the team syria is not bad syria almost qualified for the world cup uh, uh, playing against uh, 2-1 against australia that, that's not bad at all so so if he can play those those game amarjit why can't he won't be able to play against oman or qatar even though i know that qatar is in top form right now so with with, with oman and all this should be he should be able to do well i also like how actually thapa has been doing uh, and between thapa and sahel i think they've got some kind of understanding going where they are not allowing that space necessarily to be created so if one is playing more attacking minded or further up the pitch then uh, we find thapa getting into that uh, spot just ahead of the defense at the top of the box making those interceptions uh, winning the ball and perhaps trying to do start off a counter um, yeah. are you guys getting a sense of how oh, of there being a plan though <laughs> cuz watching the game i get that you want to pack the midfield i understand the concept of what you want to do hmm. but is there a like a plan for how this national team is going to progress we've been asking this for a lo- long time firstly is it even feasible to have a plan and if it is then what do you think this coach is trying to do yeah uh, before you jump in randy bhai i think uh, a the the way he's trying to play right now with the team na uh, i'll be right in saying it's completely alien to the way indian indian teams have played in the past so in that sense you'll have to say it's something new to them so to implement a plan like that and actually execute a plan on a regular basis so that when you're watching it from the outside it comes across ki this is the plan this is how they're moving it will take time right now i know it's a little uh, it's not uh, right to say that this plan will be executed properly during or during the course of your asian and world cup qualifier that should have probably been done before that but such is the reality that he's not got that much time with the team you can't really blame the coach for that usko 6 7 game to usko lage apne identify karne ke liye player and to give credit to him even sunil has said this he said i will give a chance to everyone and he's given a chance to everyone and now he will sit back and say ye mere liye chal raha hai ye mere plan mein nahi chal raha and if you're not there in my plan i have a reason to tell you why look at what you were doing in that game work harder and come back into my team Yeah, true. I agree. You know, because he now he has SCF. I'm sure it's in it's in his mind that he have he knows who are the best four to play as a defender, and who are his best best five midfielders and one striker. And he will stick to that plan, and he will not change. You know, he is a high level coach, and we have done really really well. So for this, he is not going to. Of course, yes. He, he when he play against when they play against Qatar, of course he will be concentrating a little more on defense, which we we have to because of the individual brilliance. but then playing style he will not change much a uh, guy and he should and he should just last thing i'm ending now this final thing on this conversation uh, we spoken about the fixture list randy bhai i'll start with you oman at home mm-hmm. qatar away bangladesh home afghanistan away so that's a total of 12 points what would be a good number of points for the indian team from the first four fixtures because that sets the tone then going forward uh See first, Oman first home. match is always tough. I think seven points. Win against, we uh, win against Afghanistan and Bangladesh. Yeah, that should be. A, we have to have. Of course, it's not. No matches is going to be. Afghanistan easy, away. A draw. Afghanistan away. Yes, but a, a draw. A draw again uh, against Oman. We 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 will will help players to play with a little more confidence. Yeah, Oman. Uh, we haven't in the past. We haven't done well against Oman at home. at home so you know and, and of course they will be preparing they are a world cup side as well so they will be preparing well so a draw first match i think this will help clear everything and then uh, to afghanistan and uh, and bangladesh we should be able to win so at least 6 to 7 points bro. so we're putting up a leaderboard right so renedi singh is calling 7 points out of 12 in the first four games of this qualifiers yeah. no but 7 points yes 7 4 Four at least. Oman won and Afghanistan, uh, uh, Bangladesh. Four points in all. Yeah. So, आप बता दो ना क्या दे रहे हो आप फिर? Four, seven, six. <laughs> Prediction हो रही है सर यहाँ पे? Five. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going with? I will go because we have playing. We have playing yeah. Afghanistan away. Away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're going with away. two draws and a win, right? Two draws and, and draws and one win, yeah. and obviously a loss to Qatar uh, away from home. Okay, I'll so it's five, five out of twelve. Randy Singh, I'll go with seven. Seven, huh? 
We had a draw uh, at home uh, to start off with Oman. Hmm. A loss to Qatar. Yeah. And then two wins. Two wins. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I think maybe it's a bit optimistic, but that's how that's where we need to be to head into the last game to know exactly where we stand in terms of whatever is going on. So yeah. I I, I uh, in all likelihood would also go with seven, and the only reason I go with seven is because if you've picked up a point against Oman, if you pick up three points against Bangladesh, you're in the zone. To get all to three Afghanistan. versus Afghanistan yeah. away from home. Yeah. So, Renity Bhai, let it be on record. Seven points Arjun, seven points Siddhant, five points Renity Singh. We'll of Renity course Renity revisit yeah. this mm. conversation post the 14th of November. Because that's when the fourth fixture is played versus Afghanistan. Yeah. Renity Singh, Siddhant Dhani, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of 420 Grams. Guys, remember, once a week, every week, we will be talking about Indian football. Come what may. Thank you so much for watching. Season on no season. Season on no season. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.